On the 30th of April 1947, inside of a Czech city, a horrific and brutal commandant of a concentration camp was led to a pole by a group of guards for his execution. He was a man who had overseen the Theresienstadt concentration camp, a site in which it's believed that 33,000 people died inside of the barbed wire fences. But around 88,000 other inmates were sent from there to extermination camps, meaning they were also slaughtered inside of the Third Reich. Karl Rahm is not considered one of the most well-known Nazis, however his oversight of the concentration camp resulted in the deaths of so many. He was a guard who was comparable with men such as Rudolf Hess, the Commandant of Auschwitz, and he also met a very similar fate to Hess. He was a man who was an ardent Nazi, and he served inside of the SS for some time, before he was trusted with his own camp. Join us today as we look at the execution of the Commandant of Theresienstadt, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Karl Rahm was born on the 2nd of April 1907, inside of Kloster Nürburg, which at the time was inside of Austria-Hungary. As a young man, he worked as a toolmaker, and he worked in this industry for a number of years, inside of the Austrian capital of Vienna. However, in the late 1920s, he became exposed to the Austrian Nazi party, and he heard about Adolf Hitler, and was attracted to their ideas and policies, and because of this, he then, in the 1930s, became a member of the Nazi party. But inside of Austria, the party was actually banned, as was the Austrian SS, and he joined the underground movement, which was happening. But it would not be long before the Nazis would launch an audacious attempt to seize power inside of Austria, and to then unite Austria and Nazi Germany in the Anschluss, and Hitler annex the nation into his Reich or Empire. With this, Karl Rahm then joined the SS full-time, and he became an SS officer, and served under Ernst Kautenbrunner, a man who would later then receive a death sentence at the Nuremberg Trials for his actions in the group. He did have differing beliefs to even his close family members, as Rahm's own brother was a communist, and he found himself imprisoned inside of a concentration camp. So one brother would go on to run his own camp, but the other brother was imprisoned inside of a camp. But when the Second World War broke out, he was an SS Obersturmführer, and he wanted to seek full-time work and roles inside of the SS, and he became a member of the Gestapo also. In this new role for the secret police, he was working inside of the Central Agency for Jewish Emigration in Vienna, and he worked with Adolf Eichmann on the deportations of thousands of Jews inside of German-occupied lands. Many of the people deported by Eichmann and his fellow SS officers would be sent to their exterminations as soon as they entered a concentration camp. He continued in this role for some time, but then following promotion to the rank of SS Sturmbannführer in February 1944, Karl Rahm was then sent to the camp of Theresienstadt to serve as a commandant there. Theresienstadt was a camp that was found in Terezin in Czechoslovakia, and the conditions were rather brutal. The majority of the inmates had to live in very overcrowded dormitories, with up to 80 people per room, and there was little to no food inside the camp, and the inmates were expected to do very hard labour. Those who did not work received 60% less food than the prisoners, and the majority of these inmates then starved to death. Many thousands of prisoners passed through the gates from different nations and countries, and diseases also swept through the site, but thousands were sent from the site to places such as Auschwitz, where they were then exterminated within minutes of entering the camp. When Karl Rahm entered the site in 1944, he was given a number of strange jobs to perform as a commandant. He was sent to beautify the camp to prepare for a Red Cross visit, and because of this a number of prisoners were rehoused in better quarters, and the streets of the ghetto next to it and the camp were cleaned, and even a school was set up. The plan for this was to almost con the International Red Cross as to the conditions of the camp when they would visit, and it was done to show people that the prisoners were being kept well, but this was not the case. The Red Cross visitors were shown the site, they did not notice anything out of the ordinary, and the Nazis and Rahm had managed to cover up the atrocities of Theresienstadt. Rahm then shot a documentary propaganda film around this time, that was to be shown in different nations, showing the supposed good conditions of the prisoners that they were being kept in. But during his command, there were thousands of people who were being sent to Auschwitz, 
and other extermination sites from Terezin, and they would, within minutes of being sent there, be sent to the gas chambers. Rahm was overseeing these huge deportations of Jews to their deaths from the camp, and within one month in autumn 1944, around 18,000 people were sent to other camps from the site. Many of these people were some of the Czech's culture's greatest, and they were then slaughtered inside of Auschwitz's gas chambers. As the commandant of the Sienstadt, or Terezin, Karl Rahm was known for his brutality and for his barbarism. He was also said to have been a cynical man, who would oversee torture himself, and he wished to witness this, and he also beat prisoners with his own weapons. He was not afraid to rain down brutality on the prisoners, however to some, he was rather sparing, and could even be said to have displayed some element of kindness to them. There were some Jewish prisoners who were respected by Rahm, in particular those who were from Vienna or Austria, and had a working class background like he did. He spared these some treatment, and was also known to accept bribes from inmates to spare them from being sent to their deaths inside the gas chambers. He also displayed some respect to the senior members of the camp's Jewish council by speaking to them in the German tents, and he did this in front of other SS officers, showing he was not afraid to do this. However, despite this mere consolation, he continued to aim to liquidate Theresienstadt. It was clear that his job was to try and arrange the deaths of as many prisoners as possible. There were some negotiations from Himmler to release specifically prisoners from different nations, but on the 20th of April 1945, around 15,000 prisoners arrived at Theresienstadt, following being sent from other camps on death marches. These inmates were in very poor states, and many refused to be disinfected by Rahm's officers, as they were worried that they would be gassed. These prisoners were starving, and many had lice and typhoid fever, and this then spread like wildfire around the camp and killed many. The prisoners, it was said, were no longer people, but instead were like wild animals. But Karl Rahm knew that the war was lost, and he then sought to try and save his own skin, as he knew he would at the end of the Second World War be a wanted man, and he knew he would probably, if captured, face a war crimes trial. He left Theresienstadt concentration camp on the 5th of May 1945, along with a number of other SS officers who had remained with him at the camp. He headed towards Austria, where he was then arrested by the American army, and after a couple of years of imprisonment, Rahm was sent to Czechoslovakia to face trial, as it was the nation of his crimes. He was then accused of crimes against humanity as a commandant of Terezin, and with this he was sentenced to death by the court. It would not be long before Rahm was executed, and he would be executed using the Czech pole hanging method. This was a different method of hanging which was used throughout the land, and many different Nazi war criminals were executed inside of Czechoslovakia using a pole hanging. On the 30th of April 1947, at the age of 40, Karl Rahm was brought to his execution pole in Litomeris. He was accompanied by a couple of guards who ensured that he did not run off, and he was then handed over to the executioner. Pole hanging had a number of steps. Rahm was made to stand before his three metre high pole, and a rope was attached around his feet, and then secured through a pulley at the bottom of the pole, and then he was hoisted to the top of the pole by using a sling across his chest and under his arm. Rahm then had the noose secured around his neck, which was then secured to a hook at the top of the pole. Everything was checked by the executioner, and the order was then given to release the chest sling, and Ram then jerked downwards, and the executioner then placed the heel of his hand beneath Ram's jaw to increase the force on Ram's neck, and this dislocated his neck and brought about his death. Ram was around 1,000 people executed during this period, in this manner, inside of Czechoslovakia. Karl Ram was one of a number of Nazi commandants during the Second World War, who were involved in overseeing a concentration camp, which resulted in much death and suffering. His actions led to the exterminations of thousands of prisoners, despite the fact he was just at Terezin over a year, and he would be known for his torture and violent actions towards the inmates. He was one of a number of commandants who were executed in the lands of his crimes, and he was said to have been a man who, when he worked alongside Adolf Eichmann, contributed to further mass deportations of prisoners all across Europe. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.